So it looks like talks has resumed for Disney to acquire the rights to the film and television divisions of 20th Century Fox. So what do I think about it? Well, my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you very much for tuning in to my opinion slash review of this news that dropped earlier today by CNBC. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into it, talk about it, see what all this is about, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button, become one of my subscribers. Also, click the bell so you can get all the content that I have to provide and get notified. And also, give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So now, this news right here, you know, it brings a bunch of excitement and joy, you know, to my life. I really can't express that enough. I can't stress it enough. And what it is, is earlier this month, well, not earlier this month, earlier last month, early November or a number of weeks ago, there was rumors that was coming out that Disney wanted to buy, wanted to purchase the film rights, the film and television rights of 20th Century Fox. And that made me very excited or whatever. Now, when that rumor came out, it then came out like a day later that the talk said, uh, were exhausted and they, you know, didn't want to go through with the deal. But earlier today, uh, CNBC uh, put out an article saying that those talks has resumed and it could look like they could have a deal announced as early as next week. And I want to go ahead and read the article to you here from you here. Um, it is CNBC that put this article to get together, uh, a gentleman by the name of David Faber. So I want to give credit where credit is due. But here we go. Um, Oh, wait, wait, what's, okay, Disney and 20th Century Fox are closing in on a deal, and it could come as soon as next week, according to sources familiar with this matter. CNBC has reported, CNBC has been reporting that Disney has held talks with Rupert Murdoch, and Rupert Murdoch is the chairman and CEO of 20th Century Fox. Um, with Rupert Murdoch control media company to acquire its studio and television production assets, leaving Fox with news and sports assets. Fox is also talking with CNBC parent company Comcast, but the talks with Disney has progressed more significantly. The deal contemplates the sale of Fox, NetGeo, Star, regional sports networks, movie studios, and stakes in Sky and Hulu, among other properties. What remain at Fox includes its news and business news divisions, broadcast networks, and Fox Sports. The enterprise value of the Fox assets in the Disney deal is seen as above $60 billion, according to sources. Current Fox shareholders would get one share of the Fox company that remains after the movie and television assets are sold, plus shares of Disney and fixed exchange ratio. So there you have it right there. And, um, you know, this could be a good thing and it could also be a bad thing for consumers. But I'm leaning more towards the good and the bad. Now, how could this be bad? Um, so, like I said, you know, they're not going to get the, the full Fox Sports and the Fox Networks and all that. You know, that's fine. They can stay at Fox. You know, I'm mostly excited about the television and film division coming over at uh, Disney. The reason, well, let me talk about the bad. The reason why this is bad is looking at me, I am, if you know me, I'm really into comic books and comic book movies and comic book adaptations and things like that. So immediately what I was thinking and everybody else is thinking as well that the Fantastic Four will come over to uh, Disney, that uh, X-Men will come over to Disney and Deadpool and things like that. Other movies and TV shows as well, but that's what popped up in my mind. The reason why this could potentially be bad is that we will get you know fewer comic book movies per, uh, per year. Because right now we're averaging about seven or eight comic book movies per year, which is three from Marvel, Disney, and three from 20th Century Fox and maybe one or two from uh, Warner Brothers or whatever with their DC Universe. But if Disney acquires the comic book properties from Fox, you know, we may we may only get three or four. Uh, I mean, Disney is doing three right now. They may bump it up to four. But instead of six movies, with, yeah, well, like I said, we only we may get four at the most. Um, that's the and that's one bad thing. And I will talk about the flip side of that. Also, that right now, you know, everybody's heard of Netflix and all of their original content that they're putting out for consumers right now. And, of course, you get the benefit of watching it at home. You don't have to go to the theater because, you know, everybody doesn't like to go to the movie theater like uh, myself. You know, I'm used to going to the movie theaters four to five times a week where the average American or the average movie or well, average American probably goes three to four times a year. And so Netflix is great. And one thing what they were doing with Disney 
or it just still with Netflix, like next year, Netflix is going to have like 80 original pieces of content that's going to be uh, launched on their platform, which is great. And right now, Disney has a deal with Netflix to where all of Disney's properties, well, most of Disney's properties are on Netflix. So now uh, Disney, before this deal was going down or talk, taking place, Disney was just saying that, hey, we may come up with our own video of demand service or whatever separate from Netflix. So you uh, consumers will have to pay more if they want Netflix content and Disney content. But now if Disney controls uh, Fox or whatever, if you want it, if they do, if the deal does go down and it's announced next week now. Um, if you just wanted to rent something at Fox or whatever, you may have to only get it under the Disney uh, video on demand service or whatever, what kind of platform or app that may be. And that could be potentially problematic and cost the consumers more money you, with everybody cutting cables. Been doing that for a number of years now. So it just more money, uh, more money for the consumer. Um, and but and also um there won't be any more competition. Uh, Disney really doesn't put out any already content, uh, to my understanding, but 20th Century Fox does. You know, some other blogs and articles are talking about movies like A Cure for Wellness and things like that, but I thought that movie was horrible. You know, if you loved it, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you can leave why in the comments, but, you know, they there may not be any R-rated original content like that. Or, for example, uh, February of last year, 2016 with Deadpool, that was an R-rated comedy not already comic book movie disney may not do that logan that came out earlier this year one of the best movies of the year not best comic book movies but best movies of the year that was r-rated a hard r at that disney may not want to do that or whatever or you know there's just i can go go down a list of r-rated content that disney puts out or whatever that uh they may not want to do anymore or whatever and that just could be a bad thing and when there's no competition i mean if everything is under one umbrella at disney there will be there there could potentially be less filmmakers or, or le less films and just trying to control everything. I mean, you just may not possibly get the quality. It is a possibility. I don't think that it's going in that direction. I'm looking at more of the positive things. Now, let me address the rated R uh, problem that th people are complaining about. Disney right now is already putting R-rated content out with their Netflix TV shows, com Marvel comic book shows like Daredevil, Season 1 and 2, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and, of course, Punisher that just came out on November 17th. Those are hard R. No, they're not on the big screen right now, but potentially we could get that. Also, another, I think, I think no, I think Blade is a 20th Century Fox property. Or with Miramax, but Miramax may be under 20th Century Fox. I'm not sure. Um, let me know in the comment section below. But so when people say, oh, we're not going to get a Deadpool or a Logan rated R movies anymore. Yes, I can completely understand how that could turn you off initially. But when I look at what Marvel and uh, Netflix is doing with their Marvel Netflix shows that's under Disney, those are hard R. So, you know, there is a possibility for that. But of course, let's address the elephant in the room. The best thing that, you know, I'm most excited for is Dare, not Daredevil, but Deadpool, Fantastic Four, and uh, the X-Men coming under the Marvel, coming under the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU. Like, like seriously, my, my mind is blown. Like, are you serious? We could actually potentially get in the future an X-Men versus Avengers movie. Like, like... <laughs> That would I I like seriously that that is just like a dream come true. Like years ago, we were just like, oh, that will never happen. You know, that's a pipe dream. It just won't come true. And it's also being reported that the the executives over at 20th Century Fox doesn't feel like they can compete with all the other big money making studios when it comes to these comic book adaptations. But I slightly disagree with that. I mean, you may not be able to compete necessarily, but you're still able to make a profit because um, Deadpool made a lot of freaking money. Um, Logan made a lot of freaking money. And let me look this up real quick for you here. And I always have a rule when it comes to uh, the box office. I don't want to say necessarily that a studio is just, you know, popping bottles and happy and, you know, going to the strip club, you know, having parties every time a film uh, gross is three times more than um, the production budget. Yes, you want that to happen. Sometimes you can get excited. Sometimes they can be disappointed by it. Uh, but I say that the safe word is that the studio is satisfied because let's give one film, for example, uh, Batman v Superman. Yes, that did make three times its budget, but it was still it still underperformed. But uh, some movies that are 
not even heard of before if they make three times their budget then the studio is happy like hey we made three times the budget the budget was a hundred million dollars and worldwide we grossed 300 million dollars so hey you know we're happy about that but let's look at Deadpool real quick I'm going to uh, boxofficemojo.com and the budget for Deadpool was 58 million dollars and so the uh, worldwide gross of that is 783 million 783 million guys so let's let's do that real quick 700 and uh, let's do some math 783 divided by 58 13 13 and a half times the budget so a studio is happy when they make three times the budget but in this case they made 13 and a half times so you saying that you can't compete you know i really don't understand that you know studios they don't always have to uh, make you know movies uh, comic book movie adaptations for 150 million to 200 million 250 million dollars plus some properties are necessary but you don't have to do that so if you're able to it's 20th century fox has a lot of x-men properties and comic book properties so they can do that let's look at uh logan or whatever no it didn't make 13 and a half times its budget but it still did a hell of a lot the budget was 97 million dollars which for a comic book property is not a lot of money and worldwide it grows 16 uh 616 million dollars that is a whole lot or whatever so 616 divided by 97 six and a, nearly six, six times 6.35 but six times the budget so a studio is happy when they make three times the budget logan made six uh six six times the budget so you know you're making a hell of a lot of profit right there so and i know that the production budget does not include marketing uh you, you got to tack on you know 20 to 40 45 percent or whatever warner brothers i hate to pick on them they, they spend too much money on marketing in my in my opinion but so does um sony but you know for them to say that they are not able to compete like stop you know marvel is ahead right now okay it may take you over a decade or two to catch up and why do you want to catch up anyway just do your thing but i am just so happy that um you know i hope this deal goes down uh we could get an announcement early of next week um if this was just if this was just the comic book properties or something like that, I wouldn't make the announcement until Comic-Con of 2018 because that would be after Black Panther that comes out on February 16th of next year, Avengers Infinity War that comes out May 4th, and Ant-Man and the Wasp that comes out middle of July. But this deal is just much bigger than comic book properties, so that idea may not make sense. This is Disney acquiring much more than that, like the whole film and television division um, and Hulu and things like that. So, um, yeah, we may get an announcement next week, but the thought that... Um, the thought that the X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Deadpool will be under the same roof, that is like, I would never would have thought that would happen or whatever. I just never thought it would happen. You know, I never thought it would happen with Spider-Man and we have that kind of co-deal going on. But Disney will own all of this. And as far as continuity is concerned in the MCU, they're doing a pretty darn good job. Um, doing it, Fantastic Four needed to come to Marvel anyway because 20th Century Fox had tried like four times and they just keep crapping in the bed. They're horrible. But, um, if, you know, if they were going to reboot, if Disney reboots the Fantastic Four, that's easy. Just create a Fantastic Four origin story after Avengers 4, after Spider-Man Homecoming 2. That's not going to be called Spider-Man Homecoming 2. But in Phase 4, just have an origin story for Fantastic Four. That's easy, e easy cake. As far as Deadpool is concerned, I necessarily do not want them to reboot Deadpool because Ryan Reynolds in that role was born to play that role and I love the Deadpool movie so much. But the great thing about Deadpool is you don't even have to reboot Deadpool because of how his character is built within the comics or whatever. He is a goofy, self-aware character that breaks the fourth wall. He you can he can still be Ryan Reynolds. Like seriously, if they have Deadpool 2 is gonna be coming out uh next year or whatever in June. Okay, so you know it's not gonna be Tim Miller that did the first one, uh David Leach that did uh that co-directed John Wick one and also Atomic Blonde that I didn't unlock. He's doing Deadpool 2. So you can have that movie next June. The third Deadpool movie, seriously, or if he pops up in Avengers 5, I don't want him to pop up in Avengers 4. No, they they're already shooting that right now. But Deadpool can pop up in Avengers 5 or his own solo Deadpool 3 movie or whatever. And Deadpool Ryan Reynolds can just look at the screen like, hey, okay, guys, guess what? You know, uh, so did I you know I was owned by Fox and now I'm owned by Disney and da 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 da. He can literally talk at the screen like that and it will work because that's who Deadpool's character is. is is goofy. It will work. It would be exciting. So, you know, Fantastic Four and Deadpool, you can just do it like that. You know, Marvel, go ahead. Disney, send me my check in the mail for my idea. I do appreciate it. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Now, 
on. The thing that I just don't know what they're going to do with X-Men is I don't know how you would bring the X-Men into the MCU because me growing up loving comic books and things like that, X-Men has a stronger lore and deeper history than the Avengers do in my opinion or whatever. Like the Avengers is more present day, but we have the uh, X-Men or whatever with the present day characters of like the X-Men team at the X-Mansion uh, ran by Xavier, but their history goes back decades and decades and decades and decades or whatever. So if they come into the MCU, you're going to be like, okay, where were they the whole time? Where were they when Ultron was trying to destroy the world? Where were the X-Men when Loki brought in the Shatari or whatever? Where were the X-Men, you know, because the X-Mansion is in New York and it was a battle of New York. So I really don't know how they're going to write that in to the MCU and how have good continuity i mean i don't know i'm not a writer um they can come up with some ideas but that does kind of you know tickle my fancy it does you know kind of jug my brain and i'm just not entirely sure on how they could do that the only thing i can think of is some type of time travel uh storyline or whatever and right now we do have the affinity war coming out with the all the infinity gems all the infinity stones where you have the mind stone the soul stone the reality stone and all of that so somehow if they can do something in avengers 4 or 5 or whatever to where the time stone gets mixed with the space stone this cover all the space and changes everybody's reality or miss you know wakes everybody up like the x-men has been there but the reality was hiding the x-men from everybody's mind i don't i don't know I, that may idea may sound good it may sound stupid i don't know let me know in the comment section below but i really just don't know how they're going to bring the x-men into the mcu without ruining the continuity but i'm sure that these writers and kevin feige will be able to come up with you know an idea and uh just one more thing real quick like hopefully we still will be able to get five or six or maybe seven combat book movies a year from marvel and disney because i mean you can still hire i mean you know marvel they're going to be in their 20th film pretty soon next year and so they have experience they have track records they know what they're doing and they just got to bring a you know a bigger team man to write these stories and direct these movies and i really believe if you have kevin feige you know at the ham of this and alan horn and uh, alan horn is it is alan horn and uh he's one of the head guys over at disney alan horn and bob Iger. I, I forget who's Bob Iger and Alan Horn are like the two top people at Disney. They own everything to my understanding. I think one of them is like the head of all Disney. And then one of them is like the head of Disney motion pictures. Correct me if I'm wrong. But the only person that Kevin Feige has to report to is Alan Horn and Bob Iger over at Disney. You know, there he doesn't have to report to anybody else. Maybe the board of executives or something. I, I don't know. But he doesn't have to. Uh, he doesn't have to report to. uh Gosh, what is that dude's name again? Um, I forgot his name. I, I forgot. But um, anyway, so I really feel that if Kevin Feige is at the helm and then you have the Russo brothers and you also bring Josh Whedon over there or whatever, and then maybe bring in somebody else just to really sit down and hash all this out, man, we can have some of the best comic book movies that's been ever known to man for the next 50 years um even maybe a hundred years or whatever like I, i'm in my lower 30s right now and we can still be getting new content in this mcu to where i'm 75 years old and hey 80 years old 90 years old and i would love it man i i would love it you know like i you know i don't have any kids right now but i would love to sit with my kids and my grandkids and be like yeah this started back in 2008 with iron man yeah you know just being corny and eating it all up or whatever but this is very exciting news uh, I am very uh, optimistic about all this. Of course, we're going to be getting um, um, another thing that I want to mention is Star Wars or whatever. Disney could find because 20 because uh, because Disney owns Lucas Films now. I think that was like a two or three or maybe it was a four billion dollar deal. And I, I think George Lucas. Well, at first I thought George Lucas was dumb because I'm like, you only sold Star Wars Lucas Films for four billion dollars. Are you nuts? That should have been a ten billion dollar deal. Seriously. But it was brought to my attention that not only did he get like four three or four billion liquid but he still gets a small percentage of the new star wars movies that's come out that's a smart move right there so i, I thought you was crazy Lu lucas at first because i'm you, you saw yourself short or whatever but if you still get a if you get that those three four billion plus a percentage a small percentage like one percent or ten percent of the new movies and you, you're a smart man but disney come now on all the because well 20th century I'm, I'm all over the place excuse me disney has the rights to lucas films okay but 20th Century Fox still owns the original Star Wars trilogy, A New Hope, um, 
uh, Return of the Jedi and uh, Empire Strikes Back. I said it out of order. But now Disney would own the original content so we can like get a new hope in the original content and like 4K rest, uh, restoration or whatever. And that would just be lovely. Um, you know, also Disney would acquire Avatar and, you know, all that good stuff. So, you know, they would own Alien. It's something that I would like to see in a mega crossover. Not in a real live action movie, but in like an animated movie. Maybe 3D animated movie is like um, uh, Avengers or Marvel, uh, Star Wars, and Alien crossover. That would be just fun. Not a live action movie. That that would be too much. It would be. That, w- that would have to be just some goofy. Well, I don't want to say goofy. I want them to take it seriously. That would, that would be like 30 years from now. But not a live action. But like a 3D animation like Alien, Predator, uh, uh Planet of the Apes, Star Wars, Disney, Marvel crossover. That'd be kind of fun. I would buy it, you know, just, just for, you know, cra- you know, it, it, it would just be great. But, uh, guys, that's all I have. That is just my opinion on this deal that could potentially take place and be announced next week for Disney to acquire to buy the rights to the film and um, te- television uh, properties of 20th Century Fox. So, uh, what did you think? Do you did, Does this deal turn you on? Does it turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, um, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. Um, you know, go to my website, check me out there, bookmark it, just my opinion.net. I would really appreciate it. Uh, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy uh, by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, uh, I may just do more of these videos if you like these because I mainly just do uh, film reviews, movie reviews, and reactions and things like that. But I may just start doing more videos uh, while I get my opinion on the latest news that's dropping. Or I may start taking questions if, if you want to know my opinion on this news or whatever. Just let me know in the comment section below and we'll see you know how things go from there. But guys, just thank you again for tuning in and I appreciate it. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery and that's just my opinion. Peace.